What's up, everyone? It's your boy Norn Rad89 here, bringing another rad movie review today. Today we're going to be talking about Mank, David Fincher's new film. It is currently on YouTube. I finally got a chance to see it. We're going to talk about it. Non-spoiler review. Roll it. So Mank is a 1930-1940s period piece about Herman J. Mankiewicz, the writer of Citizen Kane, and it's directed by David Fincher. It's also based on a screenplay by Fincher's father. So it has a good, really good, I think, passion project feel in his heart. So let's get down to talking about the positives of this film. So there are a lot of great positives of this movie. Key positive is definitely the tone. They nailed the tone perfectly. The vibe of the 1940s Hollywood feel, the black and white, just the cinematography and the way they use the camera and everything. It really puts you in that time period and makes you feel like you're there. Also, the actors do such a great job of just sinking into these roles and you really feel like you're just watching these real people on screen. You almost forget you're watching actors. That's how good they did. Gary Oldman is fantastic as Mank. He does a really great job. It's almost like that Heath Ledger like Joker thing. Like I as I was watching the film, there were times I forgot I was watching Gary Oldman. That's how great he did in this movie. And he really brings it home for sure. He also has some really great chemistry with some awesome ladies on screen as well. Tuppence Middleton, Lily Collins, and Amanda Seyfried, I think that's how you say her last name, all of those ladies delivered on their roles perfectly, and they have a great chemistry with Gary Oldman on screen, and all their scenes were so fabulous. Those were some of my favorites, the ones that he had with the ladies, and they did really great job, like I said, of casting this cast, and they just sank into their roles, and it's perfect when you get those actors that do that very well, especially for a period piece like this one. Also, the music composed in this film was done by Trent Reznor, the lead singer of Nine Inch Nails. He's also teamed up with Fincher before on Social Network, so I thought that was really cool. Trent Reznor is an amazing musician, and he does a really great job of also setting the tone with the score and the music that he decided to do for all the scenes and everything. So it does, like I said, a really good job of just putting you in that time Time period. The dialogue for the screenplay is very witty. It flies right off the page and like all the plot points and all the scenes that it hits like the dialogue just keeps you so interested and it really has that quick wit and really has that nature of the 40s feel to it when they're talking and everything. So that's why I thoroughly enjoyed like all the talking scenes. Like I said, there's not a lot of action in this movie. But the talking in it is just so good and so interesting to me. And I like, like I said, all the actors. They really dived into these roles very well. And as I said, also the cinematography and the way they filmed it, they used a lot of old school style shooting and the way they did films back in the day. And like Fincher does a really good job. This, I would say, is the film that feels the least like Fincher style. He's done movies like Fight Club and Social Network and stuff like that. But I feel like this movie is the least like his style, but the way he decided to tell the story is still very special, and I think he per picked the perfect way to do it and bring it to life on screen for us. So let's get down to talking about the negatives of this film. And for me, there's very little negatives for sure. Like, as I said, I really thoroughly entertained and enjoyed every moment of this film. But for me, the only negative I could think of is it does ask a lot of the audience to know about that time period and know about these people. Like, if you were not into 1940s Hollywood or a big fan of cinema and don't know a lot about Herman J. Mankiewicz or Citizen Kane or anything like that, this movie is going to fly over your head because it's got a lot of famous people in it and the actors and stuff, but they, they don't really introduce them and, like, you know, give you biographies on them or anything. You have to know your cinema and, uh, cinema and know about that kind of time period to really thoroughly enjoy this film. So I could definitely see that hurting this movie. Also, the black and white, I can see sometimes people would say it's too dark or it definitely takes away from some of the scenes because it's just the black and white is distracting and everything. But for me, it did definitely serve the tone, and I think it did perfect in this film. But I could see where those things are negatives for sure and could hurt the movie. 
But overall, in my book, this film is going to get a 9 out of 10. I had a great, great time with it. I can't wait to revisit this film, sit down with my mom and my wife and show them because I sat down and watched it by myself on Netflix. So I can't wait to introduce them to this movie. Like, as I can say, I have to revisit some of other Fincher's films like Panic Room and Curious Case of Benjamin Button. I haven't seen those ones in a while. But for me, as it stands right now, Mank is probably in my top three of Fincher films. Like, it was a really great film. I definitely recommend checking it out. Dive into this world of the 1930s and 1940s and take this ride with Gary Oldman and all these other actors. It's a great, great time, and I definitely recommend watching it for sure. Thanks for sticking around with me, guys, and hanging out for another rad movie review. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Leave a like and hit that subscribe button to support the channel. It definitely helps out. And hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the content that I put out. Have a safe and happy day, guys. Peace out.